Hey guys, welcome to a quick walkthrough of my latest template electric text. You can download it from my website ablackbirdkotsu.com. Uh, you'll find the link below the video. So uh, in the next five or ten minutes or so, I'll walk you through this template. You can use this template in both DaVinci Resolve and Infusion standalone. On my website, you'll see some further instructions on how to install it and how to use it in, in DaVinci Resolve. Infusion standalone, it's pretty straightforward. Of course, you just open up the composition and you start changing the parameters and then you're done. So uh, let's go through it. I won't actually really go into the detail of how this all works. If you are interested, right, I can do a sort of a deep dive, but just leave me a comment below. Uh, for now, this is meant to be a quick video on how to use the template itself. So once you're in the template, the first thing you want to do is basically go to the main text. In the main text, you can change the text. In the source text box, you can change all the words, just ensure they're comma separated. Uh, second important item is the text swap speed. So this is really how long it will take to swap from one word to the other word. And this closely links to uh, the text motion, and I'll go uh, into that in a moment. But basically, once you've done this, you will need to look at the font. Now, out of the box, you may not have this font impact installed, in which case you won't be able to see anything at all. So change the font to something uh, you've got installed, obviously. Um, you can, of course, change the size over here and an awful lot of other stuff. You can even actually add a bit of animation to the text. That will work as well. You can add a text follower and such, but I won't go into that right now. Now, once you've done that, the next thing you want to do is to go into the motion, right? The text motion. So um, for the text motion, it's set up to really go up and down within 180 frames, right? That was the uh, parameter here, the text swap speed. But uh, if you change that, as said, you will need to change something in this node as well. And the best way to do that is basically go into the spline view and go down and go to the Y parameter. And this is basically a repeated motion. So all you need to do is change the four keyframes here. So for instance, if you want uh, the movement for the text to come up to go a bit faster, you can change things here, you know, change the handles here or more, move the keyframe. Or if you want the text to be up for longer, you just move this keyframe or both these keyframes to the right. And then because it's set to repeat, it will be repeated indefinitely, right? So it's really, really easy to change it. So back to the flow, uh, the next thing which is really important is the text offset. So if you were to change the font to something else, it may well be the case that the text doesn't fit right anymore. And what I mean by that is basically, uh, say right now and let's just really um, first of all in this view i'm going to change it to the uh, merge node here that will make everything a bit more nippy so in here in the text offset in the highest point of the animation or at the highest point it could be that uh, when you change the font that the text will be above the line now let me show you something like this. Now that could be an effect you don't mind, right? Or you actually are looking for, that's great, right? So go for it. If not, however, right? If all of a sudden the text starts, starts hovering above it, all you need to do is pull it down a bit. And that's all there is to it. I wanted to have that in a separate note because you will encounter this uh, a lot. Whenever you change the font, this will need to be amended really typically. Uh, next one up, um, maybe best to focus now on the coloring. So if we pop that in here, this is the final coloring of the overall effect. So it's now set to a sort of a amber reddish type color, but you can easily change that to whatever you like. And of course you can add all your other effects after this, you know, you can add so, a bit of contrast to it or whatever you like. Then going back here in the flow, I've got here a disabled node and this node really helps you to add a fill to your text. 
you saw that uh, saw that in the introduction as well um, if I hit it now it will need to render a bit oh, it didn't take too long actually and there you can see there's a bit of a fill applied to it I'll switch it off for now um, and I suppose lastly of course anything can be changed but is the displacement itself the electric effect now this consists of a few uh, displacement notes with uh, fast noise associated associated with it to drive the displacement now the first one here is really some minor displacement of the overall line only if you want to change that make it more volatile or whatever play around with the parameters in here right for instance in the displays you can change the refraction strength quite drastically right and then the base movement will already become more pronounced and if you want that then to uh, change a, a lot you can change for, for instance the seeth rate or you could um, keyframe the refraction strength or add a um, for instance a shake follower to it or sorry a shake modifier to it uh, all kinds of stuff is possible here um, then the next one up is uh, the next ones rather are two displacements for the text itself right so it will only affect the text and not the line so again here you can uh, change it to your heart's content so maybe really good to uh, again show here there are modifiers at play here just play around with the parameters and the big one you see and I call that the large displaces over here and here I added uh, a bit extra to it because it's quite pronounced so um, at first right it is again it's just a displacement driven by fast noise let's let me display it here the fast noise itself changes right there's a seeth rate associated with it but within the displacement I'm basically animating the Y refraction now I've done that with a modifier a perturb modifier which you can view over here but when I had it at first it was quite uh, erratic right? so I did want it to be erratic but not all the time right it was going up and down really constantly so the way I tackled that was by not just in having just having the perturb but having the strength being affected by an expression so the expression basically says if random and then a number between 0 and 10 is greater than 8 then set the strength to non-zero otherwise to zero so it basically means that the effect will only be at play uh, sort of uh, in 8 uh, sorry in 20 percent of the cases uh, if you want to change that if you want it to be even more erratic just lower the 8 change it to something like 5 and if you want the effect to be stronger change the 0 0.012 0 to something like 0 0.02 or 3 or whatever play around with it and then the overall speed like the overall perturbed modifier effect can be changed with these parameters here so my main message really is to just to play with it right but out of the box it gives the result you saw in the video so um, I think this is all there was to it in terms of the walkthrough. Uh, a set, oh yeah, when you switch off the particle system uh, before rendering, switch it on again, right? Ctrl P, switching it on, and it will need to render a bit as you can see happening right now. Okay, so uh, if you guys have got any questions, comments, whatsoever, uh, leave a comment below. And thanks for watching. Have a great day. Take care, guys. Bye bye.